I'm Johannes Reitinger. I would like to introduce you to my inquiry learning concept Aurelia. By consulting its theory and by having a look at the practice of inquiry learning at school and in teacher education. Finally, I will refer to conclusions drawn from my own research projects. Aurelia stands for Authentic, Reflective, Exploratory and Interaction Arrangement. It is a subject and domain independent concept for self-determined inquiry learning. It emerged from my own practice as a teacher at the lower secondary school in lessons with heterogeneous groups. In a bottom-up style, so to say, I prototyped it in school. Later on, while working as a teacher, educator and researcher, I developed it further to a theory and evidence-based domain independent concept. This concept has already been successfully implemented into practical studies as well as teacher education. Aurelia is a concept that gives a helpful structure to intrinsically motivated explorations in heterogeneous, normal, distributed as well as in benefited groups. When proceeding Aurelia, with my former pupils, I experienced young curious learning people who investigated autonomously far-reaching questions like how do human bodies react on stressful situations or what does the average consumer think when reading on a food package contains E300, ascorbic acid. In teacher education, I often mention students who explore the pivotal contents of the curricula in self-determined ways powered by Aurelia and our manifest conviction that humans are naturally curious and autonomy-oriented, to say it in the words of some important American researchers like Keshton or DC and Ryan. One time, some of my students who were working in an Aurelia project examined the question what is the perfect school? After the project they said, well, we didn't find the answer, but we learned a lot of about possible ways to enhance our educational competences. Now, we agree with Hetty, who is of the opinion that we should orient our actions not only towards subjective impressions, but also towards theory and empirical evidence. No time impact had he is advising at the end of the preface of this biggest meta study on the efficacy of teaching ever he made. I also want to know my impact and the impact of Aurelia. And that's the reason why I looked out for a theoretical basis and research results concerning my Aurelia concept for inquiry learning. Let's have a look at it now. The concept key elements are a. Six principles whose recognition during the outline, performance and reflection of Aurelia projects I estimate as very important. These principles are trust, self-determination, safety, clearness, structuring and personalization. They are process supporting and therefore action orchestrating elements of inquiry oriented education. B. There are six criteria that represent the architecture of inquiry learning. And C. Seven phases of learning that should be taken when proceeding Aurelia. Let's have a closer look at the seven phases. Please read the noted phrase explanations by yourself. This phase structure is theoretically derived from two existing concepts. These are the long-known action steps according to Dewey and the scientific knowledge building process according to Demut, cited by Parchman. The sevenfold process structure of Aurelia is a closed structure. 
but within these phases we find widely open phase structures that cannot be exactly defined in more detail. So the question arises, how can we handle these open structures so that this autonomous actions within the phase won't end up in randomness? The following hints may be useful to give an answer to this question. Orient your lesson contents toward wishes, concerns and demands of the learners. Offer innovative learning environments. This may lead to a regulation by context. Transmit responsibilities to the learners. They are intrinsically motivated and therefore eager to assume tasks. Practice continuous reflection. They is a kind of viability check for all participants. A wide personal repertoire of educational techniques and micro methods will keep you flexible during unpredictable lesson stages and orient yourself towards organizational models. One suitable organizational model for autonomy-oriented lessons may be my opera model. It structures autonomous learning arrangements into four phases of equal value. Outline instead of planning symbolizes that autonomous learning cannot be planned like building a house. When building a house, the finished object looks exactly like the sketch on the plan. At least we hope so. When performing self-determined inquiry learning, the performance often drifts apart from the outline because of the integration of the learner's unpredictable desires and ideas. Therefore, the outline of inquiry learning must recognize alternatives and unexpectedness. Furthermore, the objectives can be previously defined in an exact operationalized design. It is rather part of the reflection to work out what objectives were achieved, for example by using Bloom's or Gratwohl's taxonomies. In addition to the usual lesson reflection, another dimension, the process analysis, which is a kind of meta-reflection, seems to become important. Process analysis as an element of organizing lessons means more than realizing your own subjective interpretations of actions. It consults other opinions, existing theoretical patterns and evidence-based arguments. Only by this strategy needed dispositions like open-mindedness, trust, self-awareness and a critical attitude concerning normatives can be evolved. Tools to explain and support these procedures can be found on my online OPERA portfolio on my homepage. Now let's have a look at the criteria of inquiry learning. The criteria characterize what inquiry learning may be. These are, in other words, elements to define inquiry learning. So let's go and see. Curiosity is grounded in the natural cognitive emotional structure of human beings and is the impetus of autonomous action. People may be generally curious or in particular situations. The emergence of curiosity in educational settings can be supported by considering the pupils' wishes, concerns and demands. As I already mentioned, an authentically experienced exploration can only be achieved if discovery interest is given from the beginning. Learning by inquiry in a self-determined way cannot be ordered or simply commanded without a loss of authenticity. Thus one requirement of inquiry learning arrangements is that learners approve to this special kind of education. Agreements can be encouraged by a collaborative negotiation process that respects the learner's demands. Inquiry learning needs the approval on all hands. Based on a reflective attitude and linked to former individual experiences in inquiry learning arrangements, assumptions and conceivable explanations are constructed.
The estimation of possibilities by integrating implicit foreknowledge supports learners to evolve unrelated thoughts into meaningful configured patterns. When learning by inquiry, the locating of viable exploratory paths is regulated by the learners and individually supported by the teacher. Considering evidence of autonomy research, it is important to maintain the following five elements. A. Learner's curiosity. B. Personalized intentions. C. Flexibility of actions. D. Challenging and meaningful learning contexts. And F. Demand-oriented learning environments. Reflection is a very important part of inquiry learning processes, in my understanding the first and foremost. As already mentioned, within the discourse we not only reflect the results, but also the experienced learning process as well as the developed personal context of meanings. The architecture of critical discourse derives from conventional conversation. In conventional conversations, the main path of educational performance is drawn by the teacher. In authentic critical discourse-oriented lessons, the input of the learners have a clear determining influence on the educational performance. People want to disclose personally meaningful and novel discoveries. The application and externally opened communication of new experiences and knowledge are therefore obvious escorting and finalizing actions when performing authentic learning arrangements. One possibility to publish pupils' or students' discoveries might be a self-edited journal. But there are a lot of other possibilities, as texts on the school homepage for example, short lectures at the parents' evening, little fairs or self-made streams for the institute, internal school or university TV, and so on and so on. By summarizing these thoughts, we now arrive at a comprehensive definition of inquiry learning. In my understanding, inquiry learning is a both an autonomous and a structured process of personalized quest and discovery of novel experience and knowledge. It reaches from naive explorations over systematic discoveries to methodical procedures characteristic for scientific research. The inquiry learning process is pillared by six criteria I just introduced to you. The basic theory of inquiry learning can be symbolized by a system of pillars like this. It categorizes my six criteria in inquiry-oriented dispositions and in inquiry-oriented actions. There is a final question remaining. Is there evidence for this model? Well, yes it is. I was already able to pick out some bricks of evidence in my own educational studies. They help carrying my idea of inquiry learning. This figure shows the charts taken from a quasi-experimental replication study. On several schools I compared the efficacy of Aurelia treatments compared with conventional settings. The blue lines show the significant increase of the tested variables in the Aurelia classes. The tested variables were self-efficacy, exploratory action related self-efficacy and the level of subjective concepts concerning exploratory action. This table informs about different attitudes concerning a. exploratory mode of practice, b. differentiated mode of practice and c. self-determined mode of practice, rated by pupils after participating Aurelia. I used a scale from 1 up to 4, 1 meaning a very negative, 4 a very positive attitude. 
The means at a level around 3.6 indicates high positive attitudes. This chart, taken from a repeated measures treatment study in teacher education in biology didactics, compares a baseline phase with a treatment phase. The baseline phase refers to conventional educational setting, the treatment phase to an Aurelia setting. Within the treatment phase, students' perceived competence in organizing inquiry learning increased significantly. Within another study, I gathered data concerning teacher students' estimations of efficacy of Aurelia in lower secondary school education. The regarded variables were the following. The means on that score are also positioned in the upper positive scale range. To survey students' perceived competence, effort and value with regard to the organized inquiry learning arrangements, I consulted some items from the Intrinsic Motivation Inventory. The stats speak for themselves. Just one sentence to this diagram. Aurelia Epoch Education in Teacher Education enhanced the researching habit of students significantly within only two weeks. And the final slide summarizes the data of a qualitative content analysis of Hollick and May. Important informal learning dimensions, while organizing criteria based inquiry learning could be extracted. In short, this data underpin my six principles of inquiry learning. Well, I hope I was able to catch your interest. I invite you to have a closer view on my homepage inquirylearning.au. This video is dedicated to all inquiry learning interested educators, social researchers and learners around the world. If it is a contribution to bring a little bit more self-determination into our classes, it will accomplish its intention. Thanks for watching my video. Yours, Johannes Rettinger.